Welcome to So Much Fun. Today, I thought we would go over some of the uh, glossary terms that you find in commercial patterns. And the first one we want to talk about is stay stitching. And the reason I selected stay stitching is because uh, that usually occurs near the beginning of the construction of your garment. And your pattern, these are the commercial patterns, will have a glossary and they will give you a, a brief definition of what the terms mean. And the first one, like I say, is stay stitching. And this one says to stitch it an eighth of an inch. Now, if you do an eighth of an inch stitching line, uh, that's assuming that your seam allowance is probably like a half of an inch. But uh, for most, uh, the standard we talk about for clothing is five eighths of an inch. And when it's five eighths of an inch, then we go with a half of an inch for stay stitching. The point being, stay stitching stays inside your seam allowance. And why do we do stay stitching? Well, there's a couple of reasons. When you hear the word stay stitching, think of something that stays in and it stabilizes your fabric. It helps prevent stretching. So where would that be needed? Well, around the neckline is a good place. Or it can be at the waistline. Any place where there could be some stress on the garment and we want to stabilize that fabric. So we're going to stay stitch first. So let's go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how we do it. Before I stay stitch the garment, I want to mark the center point. And for the neckline, you want to uh, go from your shoulder to the center. So direction is important. You don't begin at one shoulder's edge and continue over to the other shoulder edge. Instead, you wanna stop at the center point, then you flip your garment over, and then you repeat that from the shoulder to the center point. Keep in mind that you're not sewing two pieces of fabric together. You're just sewing one layer of fabric. Therefore, you're not needing to do any uh, reversing. And this is, again, inside your seam allowance. So you know your throat plate has markings uh, of an eighth of an inch apart. So wherever five eighths is, the next line closer to your foot will be your half inch mark. So I'm going to place my fabric I am going to come in just a little bit. I don't ever want to start right on the edge of the fabric. So I have come in just a tiny bit to make sure that that needle is going to be going through fabric. But the edge of the fabric is at the half inch mark. And now I'm going to put the foot down. Now I've got a position where the needle is just inside the edge and I am going to lower my needle all right, and before I begin, I am going to change my stitch length setting. The default setting on the machine is 2.5 based on the metric system, and I happen to prefer using a little bit longer length, and I like to take it up to three. Now, uh, I'm going to hold the thread for that first stitch to avoid any issues with uh, the threading and just make a stitch. And again, I'm not going to reverse. I don't need to reverse. One layer of fabric doesn't require reversing. So I'm slowly going to guide the fabric around, keeping the edge where the half inch mark is, and go all the way up to that center point. Right there. If you have a thread cutter, you can cut your thread. If you don't have a thread cutter, then you'll need to um, raise up your needle, raise up your foot, pull your fabric out. I always leave about six inches of thread from the needle before I start a new seam. All right, so there's half of our stay stitching. So to do the other half, I'm going to have to flip it over to the wrong side and that's fine. And I'm gonna position it the same way I did initially. And I'm gonna hold onto that thread put the foot down, put the needle down, make a stitch, and then keep going. And just go all the way around to the center point. 
So stay stitching is very simple, really not a lot to it, but it's important. It's not a step you want to skip. Now this time I have a thread cutter, so I'm going to use my scissor button and I'm going to cut my thread. So you can do it either way, it doesn't matter. But this is going to stay in. My seam allowance is 5 eighths, so the stay stitching will never be seen, but it's going to do its job to help prevent the neckline from stretching. I don't think it's a bad idea to make a sample for future reference. So if you have the time, it's well worth the effort to make that sample. And then at a later time when you are having to repeat your stay stitching, you'll know what you are to do. If you enjoyed this uh, video, please uh, subscribe and like it. And I hope you'll come back for future sewing tips. So much fun.